Good evening and welcome to 60 Minutes. I'm Tara Brown. When Munjed al Madiris fled war-torn Iraq, he escaped with just two things, a medical journal and the determination to start a new life. He put both to good use. After arriving in Australia as an illegal boat person, Munjid is now one of the most skilled surgeons in the world. His expertise is in a revolutionary procedure called osseointegration, which fuses human bones with robotic limbs. As Mark Burroughs reports, it's an operation he uses to rebuild the often troubled soldiers who fought in conflict zones like his old homeland, good men like Luis Montalvin. Good morning. How are you, buddy? Good, how are you? Good to see you. You too. You look good. Thank I you. heard that. How was the leg? They are two men with two very different paths. Welcome aboard. Hey, thanks. United yes. by yeah. fate nice. and the misfortunes of war. Munjid Almaderis, the refugee surgeon who fled his homeland to escape Saddam Hussein. And Luis Montalvan, the US war hero who helped end the ruler's tyrannical reign. We're two sides of a coin, the soldier and the surgeon, both protecting lives, but the soldier taking lives to protect lives and the surgeon repairing lives to save lives. Both men lost their lives, such as they were, to the bloody battlefields of Iraq. But it's how they found a way to start again that's forged their incredible bond. I have a lot of admiration and respect for people like Lewis, who had a massive trauma in his life that changed him permanently, okay? And he's still become an inspiration to others. Today, Munjid's a world-renowned surgeon who calls Sydney home. But back in 1999, he was an eager young medical student, starting out his career at Baghdad's chief hospital when he was faced with an unthinkable ultimatum. Cut the years off soldiers who deserted Hussein's army or be killed himself. There was no question in my mind that I would uh, uh, be forced to do uh, these kind of atrocities. Uh, but then I came up with a different idea that I could run away and uh, I managed to uh, hide in the female toilets, um, spend five hours there and from there onward, my life turned upside down and I became a refugee. Had you been discovered, what do you think would have happened to you? Oh, it's very simple, I would be executed. For Luis Montalvan, his journey to Iraq started straight out of high school when he enlisted in the US Army. By the time he arrived in Baghdad, he was already a platoon leader and had a promising career ahead of him. Okay, now they hide AKs in between mattresses and blankets and shit. So. But in December 2003, he was attacked by rebels on the Syrian border. Myself and one of my, and my soldier, uh, we ended up uh, shooting, um, killing one of them. Um, in the melee, I uh, was lacerated and then and sustained a very, very bad uh, head trauma. Was there a moment during this attack where you thought, ooh, is this it? Oh, sure. Toward the end, to the end of the struggle, as I fell to the ground um, and hit my head and then went unconscious, you, you think, oh, God, um, you know, is this it? Luis survived the attack, but his career in the military did not. I'd been in the army for almost 18 years, almost my entire adult life. That's your identity. And to lose that, um, as well as to lose your ability, your mobility, uh, you question your existence. Tuesday. Back home in the US, he gradually lost all control of his right leg and was forced to rely on a service dog named Tuesday to get through each day. It was a very bleak time. I almost didn't make it out of that time. Um, but thankfully, like manna from heaven, uh, Tuesday came into my life. Tuesday, shake, shake. Yeah, I know you, you shot my boy. He's my best friend. He's my best mate. Up. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're but Luis's leg continued to deteriorate. 
By 2016, he couldn't put up with the pain any longer. And he made the incredible decision to have it amputated. You know, I never forget coming out of the OR, and I was awake for that procedure. You were awake? I was awake for the amputation, um, which was a heck of a thing, to watch your leg being cut off. So the way that is now, people think, well, he's walking on his leg, it looks fine, it... but that's not the case? That's, that's not the case, that's right. After the operation, and, you know, uh, Luis was fitted with a traditional hand. socket prosthesis. Yes, it's, it's outdated, it's uncomfortable, it's painful, it's limiting. So what you have of your leg is actually not sitting comfortably and snug inside there, is it? No, not at all. So this prosthesis goes the length of my residual leg, and it's quite big. I mean, it's the entire span. This mm. hitting my groin with every step, uh, chafing. It's a heck of a thing because it's, it's helping you to be mobile. But at the same time, the socket is a torment. I, I needed to find a better way. I spent day in and day out researching researching, researching a better way. And that better way led me here to Australia and to Moonjit. By the time Louise started searching for solutions, Moonjit was the world's leading authority on osseointegration. It's a cutting edge procedure in which a metallic rod is implanted directly into an amputee's thigh bone and connected to a robotic limb. How many ops today? Oh, we've done six, I think, yeah. and two more left. And go. Good G'day. Here's the day. Hi, Hi. How are you? Despite an ever increasing okay. demand so for his orthopedic good. skills, Munjid reserves special time to treat war veterans like Luis, who lost limbs in his native Iraq. I feel that um, I have a duty to give these people back something that they lost serving their countries and trying to um, give Iraq a better future. That's the least I can do uh, to show that not all Iraqis are bad. The operation will take less than an hour, but it's not without risk. OK, guys, let's get going. Happy if I start? How did you sort of become such a specialist in this technique? I watched The Terminator. <laughs> uh, look, um, it's, it's a passion that I had uh, since I was a young kid, especially living in a country like Iraq. Uh, you see a lot of disabled people. And always uh, the idea of, um, of making half human, half machine fascinated me. So you're being, in a way, serious about The Terminator? I was inspired by The Terminator. Uh, it's hmm. not, uh, I'm not kidding. That's it. Thank you. Thanks very much. With true military precision, Luis's operation is a success. Thank you. You ready to stand up? I am. OK, let's do that. And within days, he's already on his feet. Ready? Yeah. How does it feel? Can you tolerate the weight? I can. It feels good. Determined to get a feel for his new limb. So, you know, with the socket, you throw the leg, mm -hmm. you don't need to do that here. You walk just like normal. The most remarkable feature of osseo integration is that amputees say they can actually feel the ground through their robotic leg. They'll be able to feel if they're stepping on someone's toes. If they're walking on sand, they feel it's sand. If they're walking on carpet, they feel it. It feels fantastic. It feels like you are regenerating your leg because you are no longer detached from your prosthesis. What do you think of this place, Lewis? Oh my gosh, it's glorious. The effects of the surgery aren't purely physical. Yeah, well, we can um, anchor and uh, have a swim. Lewis also has newfound confidence when Munjid invites us for a day out on his boat in Sydney's pit water. All new meaning to the term legless. <laughs> Would you hold on to my sea leg? <laughs> do you see a day when you can go to a party, walk around, do something, and no one will know what is going on? Oh, I, I see that day happening in just a few months, which is exhilarating. Okay. 
Okay. How important is that for you? It's very important. It's important to me. It's important to people with disabilities. You want to fit in. Here it goes. You don't want to be different. How is it? It's nice. And one month later, it's a new man who greets his beloved service dog Tuesday at home in New York. When you go through trauma, when your life is starkly altered, when it is spiraling downward, unconditional love is as bright a light as exists. The darkness inside you can make you feel so small. Sadly, some wounds can never heal. While Munjud's miracle surgery eased Luisa's physical pain, the emotional scars he suffered in Iraq ran deep. Just weeks after returning to the United States, Luis took his own life. Last September, he was buried with full military honors at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. His parents, George and Patricia, asked us to share his story in the hope it raised awareness of post-traumatic stress and inspires sufferers to seek help. Where were you when you got the call? I was in uh, Tel Aviv and I received that phone call from uh, Louis' father and, um, and it was um, a major shock. Um, it's a devastating outcome and Munjud is still struggling to make sense of Louis's death. It was the last thing you would expect because Lewis was doing so well. He's lost not only a patient, but a friend. He was perfect. He was absolutely perfect. He was so happy. His progress, his recovery, and he was the star patient. And then all of a sudden, all of that ended. What is that like for a surgeon? I don't know how to describe it. I felt that I failed drastically. Um, obviously, I mean, um, the biggest loss is to his family. They are the ones who have to live with it and uh, more than anybody else. And, um, and I wish, truly, I wish that Lewis is in a better place.